Welcome everybody, Kelly here. Today we're in the shop, got the third gen 4Runner with me and I just wanted to do a quick video here showing some of the interior modifications I've done to this thing to you know keep it sort of up to date and you know a little bit more user friendly. So anyways let's just go over those today. So this is my 97 third gen 4Runner Limited and let's just go over some of the things that uh, we got going on here in the interior. So I kind of got everything on here up and running, got a few lights going on. So let's just take a quick look. Okay, so here we go. First thing you need is a set of all weather floor mats. Uh, you can use whatever brand you like. I prefer uh, the WeatherTech ones myself. They seem to be pretty good. Uh, whatever brand you wanna use, obviously these are something that are essential. Just keeps the interior clean. You can get all the mud out and dirt and whatever. So these, number one. The next thing I've done is upgraded all the dash lights to some LED bulbs. Obviously if you have a third gen for owner, you know how much they suck. And you can see these are super nice and white and bright. So I've changed those out, uh, definitely a must do. Uh, next thing I did from there was I changed out all the pocket lights. Uh, we got those LED bulbs there. Same with that guy there, got him as an LED as well. Those definitely make a nice little upgrade. Now I have a pretty basic radio, but definitely upgrading to a newer radio uh, is definitely important for one thing mostly. And that is so we can get a mic so we can have hands-free calling. Obviously everyone has cell phones and that is a must. That's one thing I miss on the older vehicle versus the new one is having you know hands-free obviously. So we had to add that in there as well. One thing older vehicles didn't have was good cup holders. You know, they just weren't thinking of convenience back then as much as they do now. So I've added this guy right on here. Got this thing from Etsy. It's a nice little add-on. Um, it comes with two screws. There's basically one right in there. And if you, this guy's also removable. If you lift that up, there's a screw right in there. It just comes with a self-tapping screw and that wasn't good enough for me. So I went ahead and I bolted it on from the inside with the little screws. And I can quickly explain how I done that after. Now next you can see I have this stuff mounted here. So obviously I got a phone mount. This is a RAM mount. And then we have an aux beam switch panel uh, mounted to here. How that is done is with this little bracket right here. Now the same thing with this bracket, comes with self-tapping screws, but I never really trust those. So these ones up in the corner, I actually nut and bolted on as well. And I'll explain that in a moment as well. And we'll cover those all in once. Now something I just did the other day was I sort of added this little Molly panel right here. So this guy, same thing. It was supposed to just be screwed onto the plastic. I didn't really like that. And it, it's to me, it made more sense that it had a gap behind here. We could always slip stuff from in behind um, and you know mount a couple of things to it. What I'm gonna probably end up by putting in here is like a pouch, um, maybe with a multi-tool and a flashlight and a couple other little items that I may wanna grab quickly. So I've also bolted that in. I'll explain that in a moment. One of these you don't really need and that is the GoPro mount. But if you want one, there is one there. Obviously you only care if you're filming something. But what I do have hiding back there is a dash cam. These days, it's pretty much a must. All these people, you know, uh, doing whatever, lying about their crashes or whatever it is. This way it holds everyone accountable. And uh, that way you have proof of what happened or didn't happen. Uh, I would say that's pretty much a must as well. Oh, and here's something that I almost forgot right underneath here. So factory cigarette lighter, important. Obviously we've got some USB um, adapter in here, but I've recently just added this other 12 volt plug back here. What I've done is I've just linked it to this wiring here. So you gotta make sure you don't overdraw, but it'll be perfect for charging phones. I'm always charging cameras and that kind of stuff. So it gives me, I'll get another one of those in there and I'll have four USBs and I can you know keep all kinds of things charging. So I figured I'd explain this just a little bit better with here. So normally the factory uh, cup holder is here. This thing's super flimsy and it pretty much sucks. So I've actually just removed it and this is where I'm running the wire here for my aux beam switch panel. Um, so it's pretty convenient. The ram mount just bolted to here. Um, I have this short extension so I can undo it, swivel it all around in any way I really want to. You know, it sort of blocks your steering, con or uh, sorry, it sort of blocks your uh, heater controls, but there's really not much there. And most of us that are driving this all the time, I mean, you kind of have it memorized. You don't really even need to see it. So um, the good thing about where the RAM mount location is too, is when the phone is in place, um, from my view, you can still see the, the clock as well. 
Not that you don't have it on your phone anyways, but yeah, it's still there. If it's working on your truck, you want to be able to at least appreciate that it's still working. Here's something that also can come in handy. You can get these cheap little organizers for the back of the seats. You know, you can put all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, we just cleaned this out recently, so there's nothing really in there, but you can see it's got a couple of different pouches and you know, uh, for what it's worth, these things really aren't expensive. You know, it'll add some little bit of convenience and, and storage options for back here as well. Now, currently in the back, um, you know, my trunk's empty. I don't really have anything back here. But what I have added is these, um, basically these Molly panels from Outbound Nevada. Super handy. Uh, they go in pretty easily. They basically bolt in with some bolts there and there. And, you know, obviously you can add all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, you know, I got these pretty organized on there and I have these mounted pretty, pretty securely. Maybe not this one so much, but I, these are mounted really well and they, they don't bounce around too much. Basically I have all my tire stuff in here, just some random supplies and a little, uh, you know, safety kit. I'm going to actually put a quick release fire uh, extinguisher on there. And then on this side here, um, same thing. I have some more tools and supplies. And I'm gonna just add a couple more bags to there. And that's really good stuff that you wanna keep around and that you don't really wanna take in and out of the vehicle. Uh, those, basically, they come in really handy because it's, it's not an area that you use too much up there. Well, the last thing I wanted to do is just quickly go over how some of this dash stuff comes apart. It's actually really straightforward. But if you're interested to know, uh, let me just quickly explain it to you. I'm not gonna take it apart myself, but I mean, I could really, I could pretty much just tell you how to do this and you'll be able to figure it out. All right, so to do pretty much all, any of this stuff, we really only have a few main components. So if you're wanting to take any of this really apart, it's pretty straightforward. So let's start here. So here's my under dash. This thing literally is held on by four 10 mils. So we get there, 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 there. And then it has a couple of pops. We just pull it and basically pull it out. Uh, if you have any switches here, those will uh, stay on. Because I recently put in the aux beam switch panel, I had some switches here not using those anymore so you can pretty much just drop it and lower that thing down now what we have here obviously around the e-brake we just lift this guy up and we can just go along with our fingers and we can just pop this up it's literally just held on with clips there's some switches here that you may or may not have you can just undisconnect those and put them to the side next that leaves the shifter uh, basically plastic around here pretty straightforward as well we can just grab it with our fingers and we can pop it up and pop it up around. What you're gonna have is the boot is gonna stay on with the shifter. Now, mostly uh, you can just lift it out of the way and just sort of push it off to the side. If you actually wanna remove, remove it, all you have to do is take this screw out right here for the shift knob, it will slide up, and then there's a wire just for this four wheel drive button. Obviously, if you have a, a something a manual, it'll be a little bit different. I'm not even sure how those ones go, uh, but that's how it is for the automatic. From there, what we'll have is the surround for the radio. Um, now how that comes out is pretty straightforward as well. Basically we have to remove this panel. All these buttons here, they literally just pull off. So you can take off all of those. And then here we just need to get a little bit of a trim tool or a screwdriver and pop this plastic forward. Once that's forward, we're gonna have a Phillips screw here and a Phillips screw right there. Then from there, we can just go ahead and we can gently pull this forward. We're gonna have a couple connectors obviously for up here and we're gonna have a connector back here, but that basically removes all of that. And we'll take this one more step forward. Obviously if you wanted to do the dash stuff, there's just a Phillips screw here and here, and then we can pop this forward. I can't remember, I think there might be one underneath the corner here and the corner there, but either way, that gets that out, and then for this uh, speedometer controls, there's uh, four screws back there as well. So that would basically cover almost any of these mods that I've just shown you here uh, to do any of those plastics. You could do all of this. Oh, one more thing. So this guy right here, um, to do this, uh, once you've popped all those trims off, there would be a screw right there, and right in there is a plastic pop screw. What I've done is I've gone ahead and replaced that with a nut and bolt to make this thing considerably more firm. So it is literally on there. And like I was saying earlier, I, uh, I spaced it out. 
I just used these little black spacers that I found and I put those in behind there and put those on with the nuts and bolts. Well, hopefully you found some of that information useful and you know, consider doing some of those modifications to yourself. Really not that hard. You know, if you're local to me and you want some help with that, you know, we'd be more than happy to help you here at the shop. So anyways, reach out if you're interested. Please consider, give me a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and do me a really big solid and you know, maybe watch one of my next videos. It really helps out the channel. So thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.